Welcome to yet another unboxing video. Today we have a product that I am pretty excited to take a look at. This is the P9X79WS, so what we already know about it, based on the WS in the product name, is that this is a workstation grade board from ASUS. So that means usually, in the past, tons of PCIe slots, workstation grade features, and workstation grade reliability. So this is the kind of thing you might want to use for a rendering machine, or if you're like some of ASUS's customers, even a very, very high-end gaming machine. Because yes, while all of that stable, you know, quality stuff is there, this is also a completely overclocking friendly motherboard as well. So let's have a look at what we've got in terms of included accessories. You're really far away. Let's have a look at what we've got in terms of included accessories. We have four SATA 3 6 gigabit per second cables, four SATA 2 3 gigabit per second cables, various colors. Uh, that's an interesting strategy. We've got a Molex to 2 SATA power adapter. We have a four-way SLI bridge. Bam. Matte black PCB on that, by the way, looking boss. Three-way SLI bridge, also with a matte black PCB. Love it. And then we've got uh, the usual two-way SLI bridge. It's a flexible one. It's an orange one. I sure hope if you buy this board, you're going to go with three or four-way SLI so that you can use one of those instead. We've got a serial riser, so that's a PCI bracket that you can plug into the board if you still need serial. That is a very workstation-friendly feature. We've got Q connectors for front USB as well as the front panel connectors for power and whatnot. We have a, an eSATA as well as USB 2 PCI back. Uh, PCI backplate, and then we've got our I.O. shield, and finally the user guide as well as a DVD, which you won't use because you're going to download the latest off the ASUS website for all of your drivers and utilities and whatnot. And speaking of utilities and drivers and whatnot, this one needs lots of them because it has a lot of different features that are actually pretty cool. So let's take out the board, and then we will get into all of that neat stuff. So the first thing, the first thing we see on this board is that it has, yes, count them, one, two, three, four, five, six PCI Express 16X physical slots. So not all of these are actually wired for 16X. In fact, only this one and this one are actually wired for 16X. These ones are all wired for PCIe 8X. Now, bearing in mind this is a PCI Express Gen 3 board, which means that even PCIe 8X is going to have the same bandwidth as PCIe 16X Gen 2. So I'd be comfortable running a graphics card in any one of these slots, no problem. Also, remember, on X79, there's no funky, some of the PCI Express lanes are coming off the chipset and some are coming off the CPU, none of that. Everything is coming out of the same place, so there's no additional latency penalty for using a particular slot versus another one. So these are your two main PCI Express 16x slots for two-way graphics card configurations. For three-way, I guess I'd probably go with one, two, three. And then for four-way, you don't really have much of an option. It's one, two, three, four. So those are your preferred configurations. Uh, what else we got on here? Aha! Like all of ASUS's X79 boards, this one has eight DIMM slots, which means support for oodles and boatloads of memory, which is definitely necessary for a workstation environment where you might be doing 3D rendering or heavy video editing, heavy photo editing, all of those kinds of workloads where you need a ton of RAM. So that is built in to this particular board. There is our LGA 2011 socket with our 8-pin power connector. Nothing really excessive on this board, like no two 8-pins or anything like that. It's not really necessary anyway. Okay. But, uh, but there you have it. There is our CPU PWM. Of note on this board is the fact that it does use DigiPlus power control so that it is digital VRM for both the memory and the CPU. Very, very cool thing to have. We've also got a very unique cooling solution on this board. Check this out. So we've got the heatsink up here for the CPU PWM. We've got an additional couple of heatsinks over here that are going to help us dissipate some more heat. And then finally, we've got your standard low profile heatsink on the Intel chipset itself. So that one actually isn't cooling a whole lot, but these other guys are going to be taking care of most of the cooling, which is going to be, or most of the heat, which is going to be produced by this. So going back to the board, what else we got here? We got MemOK, okay, which is, increases memory compatibility, allows you to get into the BIOS to configure things. We've also got an easy plug, so this is additional power for the board in the event that you do need it. This is particularly necessary for boards that have that are intended to have a ton of graphics cards installed in them. 
24 pin power connectors in its ideal location along the right hand edge. We've also got an EPU button that's for power saving. USB 3 front panel connector in its ideal location. We've also got SATA 3 6 gigabit per second connectors. These two run off the Intel chipset. These two run off of a third party Marvell chipset and they also support ASUS's SSD caching feature. So remember, X79 unlike Z68 does not natively support SSD caching, caching so ASUS has implemented that with a third party chipset. These four are SATA 2 3 gigabit per second so you'll use that for your lower performance or your storage drives or whatever else the case may be. On the front we've got our front panel connectors for your LEDs, your power button, your reset button, all that good stuff. We have an internal USB port. This is handy for, you know, it's more like server and workstation grade applications. So if you have, for example, a storage device or something that actually connects with one of these internal ports and you don't want to run it through a pass through out the back of the case, this is a very handy thing to have. Two USB 2.0 ports, onboard power buttons. So yes, we still have those, uh, those awesome enthusiast grade features, even though it is a workstation board. ASUS has really included everything here. More fans. I'll point out all the fan locations afterwards. Uh, clear CMOS, but that is not... Hold on. Yep, clear CMOS jumper. TPU, so that is for that is more for performance, whereas the EPU is more for energy efficiency. Front firewire, and we've already covered the PCIe slot, so a couple more things. Just want to show you guys where all the fan connectors are on this board, because that can often influence whether to go with a particular board for a build, whether it has good access to your fans. So we have one, two, three, Four, five, six, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, six PWM fan connectors. So that is, uh, let's see, yeah, I'd say that's pretty good placement because a lot of the time you're going to have a chassis fan in the top that you got to deal with. You're going to have a chassis fan in the back you got to deal with. You might have a couple of CPU fans that you want to plug in. But if you got like a big knock to a D14 cooler, that deals with your front fan and that deals with sort of your, either your front fan or some other fan pretty well taken care of as far as I'm concerned. On the back of the board we find just an additional metal strip for cooling some PWM components so that means a case like an Antec 1100 wouldn't be a bad idea because it has some cooling that you can direct at the back of the board for additional, well, cooling. Let me just see if there's anything I'm missing here before we get too far into it. So it does support both four-way SLI and four-way crossfire. It does have, ah this is good, dual Intel Ethernet server grade LAN ports, so that means no third-party chipsets. We are using the Intel Ethernet ports and nothing else. It also has an LED, a couple different LED buttons. Uh, here, if you want to come closer, has a couple different LEDs on it. I actually am not 100% sure where they are, but I know that one of them turns either. Um, green, blue, or red to indicate whether you're in power saving mode, regular mode, or overclocking mode. And then there's also an additional LED set that, eh, hold on, let me just find this guy. Aha! Indicates whether you have any errors. Ah, this one. Sweet. So... Uh, this doesn't happen to me often, but I've totally blanked. Give me a sec, guys. Let's do the I.O. So we've got our PS2 keyboard and mouse ports, dedicated ports. I know I'm old fashioned, but I still like them. Seven regular USB 2 ports. This guy is compatible with uh, ASUS BIOS flashback, which allows you to throw a USB drive with the red correct BIOS file in there. Press this button and without even memory or CPU installed, you can flash to the latest BIOS. Very cool. Optical audio out. The dual gigabit Ethernet, uh, dual gigabit Ethernet by Intel. Firewire. Two USB 3.0 ports. Remember, there's two more supported from the internal header as well as 7.1 analog audio out. There's also some cool BIOS features to go along with this board including pressing F3 or F12 to easily access your frequently used functions as well as to take a screenshot of your BIOS to send to others to help them to achieve the same level of performance that you have once you've tweaked things as much as you want. There's also Fan Expert Plus, which is a really cool way to manage all of these fans that you can plug into the board. You can either set profiles or even temperature curves. So that means if your temperatures go up, the fans will go up. If your temperatures go down, the fans will spin down, which is very, very neat. This board also supports, aha, look, there's a label right there, USB 3 Boost, which is basically just a way of making any USB 3 drive perform a little bit faster, and USB 3 devices that support UASP significantly faster, which is cool as well. So thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the P9X79 WS workstation board. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. Crazy Russian found the light that lights up and tells us that 
the, the everything is okay light, this one right here, so blue, so you can see we're running in normal mode, or as normal as things can be with an extreme edition and 32 gigs of mismatched memory installed, so we're just making sure that everything's running okay with this board before it goes into a high-end workstation.